G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. I've had a few questions and comments on the channel asking me about drop-in oil additives. I'm guessing it's usually about motor oil, and I had a pretty good response to the video that we did a couple of weeks ago on uh, Pennzoil Ultra Platinum and how you can sort of discover a bit more information about the product. So I thought I'd do a similar thing for some of the pour-in additives. Liquid Molly seems to be one of the more popular brands, so I just picked two of their products, and we'll see what information we can derive from the data that's available on the internet. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned on the Shell Ultra Platinum video, uh, one of the best things to do is to go directly to the manufacturer for all your sources of information. Because remember, products can sometimes be updated, and if you are going to a reseller or a retailer's website, sometimes they haven't updated the information to what is the latest and greatest. So specifically, go to Liquid Molly uh, in your region. Now, I've been directed purely to the Liquid Molly website, which probably means that I need to use a VPN or something like that. Uh, but evidently, you know, knowing what country I'm in, they've directed me to this right website for retail purposes. Now, the thing is, if you scroll down, and I'm just going to, you know, pick two of the more popular products, um, you know, uh, for simplicity. Uh, this first one, Engine Protect, that seems like a, a really good place to start. What's interesting though is that if you actually go to the uh, Engine Protect page, the Australian website is pretty light on information. So it, it tells you the size of the can, okay, it's 500 mils. It tells you that you know 500 mils is sufficient for about five liters of oil. And it gives you a little bit of information about what it's supposed to do. So if you add it to a full synthetic, it's supposed to, you know, uh, reduce wear by about 35%. Um, what you're supposed to get out of that, extended engine service life, you know, quiet running, optimal engine power, blah, blah, blah. So uh, effectively what we're expecting, I think, out of this product is some kind of anti-wear slash friction modifier. That's what I would expect to see in the formulation. Now, they're clearly not going to give us the formulation, um, but I, what I thought was unusual was that when you go down the page, um, there's not really anywhere to get like a safety data sheet or a product data sheet. It was kind of unusual. Um, in any event, you can actually go uh, direct to the main Liquid Molly website. Remember, I think Liquid Molly is a, a, a German brand, so they will have a global website. And of course, I'm going to the, for the English information. And if you now scroll down, then um, you'll find a, an identical product, which is called Motor Protect. Engine Protect and Motor Protect seem to be exactly the same thing but under two slightly different brand names so once you go to motor protect again same thing it's 500 mil and if we look at the description okay 500 mils makes up to uh, five liters of motor oil and it has the same claim about uh, reducing wear by 35 percent. so that tells us that we're on the right track with the exact same product fortunately here okay we get a bit of a description this doesn't really tell us a whole lot aside from you know what the uh, product packaging should look like but fortunately under additional information and specifically safety data sheets and product information right now we've got safety data sheets in uh, german and english and we've got product information in a bunch of different languages so this is where i personally would go uh, the product information tends to be a bit of a sell sheet so if you go to the product information from motor protect it's not really going to tell you a whole lot it, it kind of reads like a sales pitch so in properties it's going to say reduce oil and fuel consumption, has very good thermal stability, friction and wear reducing, increases smooth operation, blah, 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 blah. You know, you kind of feel like you're getting sold to. But it will give you a little bit of information on, on the technical data, right? So um, what is it exactly in it? Uh, flash point, pour point, viscosity at 40C. Uh, I mean, we don't really need to know a bunch of this information. But one specific thing that it does call out, which I think is, is good of them to do so, is this comment that it's not suitable for use on motorbikes with wet clutches. And that's usually because of um, uh, friction modifiers, right? Whenever we have uh, friction modifiers, that's one of the big things that is different between a standard engine oil and a motorbike engine oil. Um, uh, uh, friction reducers play havoc with the, uh, with the clutch system on a motorbike because, of course, it's uh, the same oil on a motorbike using, being used to lubricate the, the, the clutch pack as well as the, as the engine. So um, that's all we can really get out of the product information sheet. 
Sometimes though, when you go to a safety data sheet, you can get a little bit more information about the composition. And this is where I think the liquid moly products are, are quite interesting because being that they are oil additives, they tend to have a few um, components which have to be listed on a safety data sheet. And that's usually for either regulatory reasons or for toxicological uh, reasons. So if you have a look here, it can uh, start to give you an information. Now, remember, this is not complete. So if you look, at, um, one of the subject lines will be, you know, uh, the content percentage. And if you add all of these together, so 20 to 30%, two and a half to 10%, one to 5%, and about 1%, that clearly doesn't add up to 100% of the composition. So we're only getting a very small picture into what is actually in the bottle. There are other components, and therefore, what I'm telling you now is not gonna be a complete picture but we can start to get a feel for maybe their uh, philosophy in, in what they're trying to achieve. So the first thing would be, um, we obviously need to solvate the additives in something. They, they, they need to come in a solution. Uh, and so that is usually what the lubricating oils are gonna be for. So hydro-treated, neutral, oil-based. If they're hydro-treated, this probably means it's a group two product, right? But to be honest, we're not really all that fussed. Remember, it was made to be a pour-in solution for a full synthetic. And we know that uh, full synthetic uh, motor oils are generally, you know, uh, group three or PAO. And uh, therefore, a group two is going to be compatible with either of those types of oils. Um, so that, that really is just there to solvate the rest of the additive package. It's not really doing a whole lot. The next one down, uh, am amines, right? Or reaction products with uh, monoglycerides and molybdenum oxide. So this would fall under the category of organomolybdenum compounds, uh, which are sort of a, a family of compounds with, which have uh, both antioxidant and anti-wear properties. So it's a little bit like ZDDP in that respect, um, in that uh, it, it, it is a multifunctional additive. I think the theory in how it lays down uh, anti-wear films is that the um, uh, under under stress, it basically forms molybdenum disulfide, right? So it's almost forming a solid additive um, at the boundary. But I don't think that that, uh, that mechanism is completely understood. In any event, it is a multifunctional additive that can both do kind of friction reducing slash anti-wear, slash a little bit of uh, antioxidant behavior. And the cool thing about um, some of these organomolybdenum compounds is that they seem to be complementary to some of the uh, amine uh, antioxidants as well. So they seem to kind of work quite well together. There's a, there's a you would say there's a synergy, All right? So that's what's in uh, that. And then we've got, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this word. I'm, I'm kind of self-taught, so I don't, I've never taken any chemistry classes or anything like that, but I think it's called succinamide, succinamide. Anyway, uh, these generally are dispersants, right? So um, remember, you've got detergents and dispersants. Dispersants tend to be bigger. They tend to hold on to, um, uh, they tend to hold on to contaminant molecules and sort of sus keep them in suspension so that they can be taken to filters. So that's really what that is. And then as you go a little bit further down the list, you've got uh, a sulfonic acid and, and calcium salt. So that's probably an overbased uh, calcium sulfonate. So that, that's a detergent. Um, and that makes up a very, very small percentage uh, by volume. And finally, in a very, very small percentage, we have um, some branch phenols. Now, phenols are usually antioxidants. So remember, we have two major family, well, three major families of antioxidants. We have the phenols, and we have the amines, and we have other compounds like ZDDPs. ZDDPs are peroxide decomposers, whereas the amines and the phenols are, um, they act on, on free radicals. Phenols tend to work at lower temperatures than the amines do. So um, that's, that's kind of what they're going for there. Now, going back to what was the overall philosophy of Motor Protect, right? So remember, if we go back to the information, what it was saying under additional information, sorry, the description was the idea that it would reduce wear, extend engine service life, um, you know, it, well, smooth running, so that's probably friction reduction um, and optimal engine power. So 
for a product that is supposed to um, reduce wear and uh, lower friction, I'd say that that mm, I seem to have lost it. Uh, anyway, that composition with the molybdenum compounds, um, I guess that's what they were going for. But they're probably not in the kind of the quantities that I would have expected. And so that's when we get into what is the what are the missing components that aren't actually on the SDS, right? So evidently there'll be some something else in the system, uh, which is probably a bit more of a friction modifier than that, you know, five percent or so of the uh, organo organomolybdenum compounds. All right, so let's uh, let's take a, a second product. I was going to look at the engine flush as well because I, I think that's a that is designed to act in a very different way. So remember um, with the uh, previous product with the motor uh, motor protect that was designed to be used with new oil so you've done a flush you're filling with new oil you pour it in this stuff is designed to be used just before you drain used oil right so the idea is that you can use it to clean up a whole bunch of um, system deposits and things like that um, now again i've gone uh, to the german website or the the global website of liquid molly because it has a bit more information and it, you know very clear with the warnings on this one so it may be fatal if swallowed and it enters the airways so we're expecting a little bit of um, information on a safety data sheet and again when you go across there and you scroll down to the listed compounds um, one thing i found interesting here is that there's not all that much listed and what is listed, okay, hydrocarbons, C10 to C13, there's alkanes, isoalkanes, cyclics, and aromatics. The fact that there is, you know, 2% aromatic, or potentially 2% aromatic compounds suggests that this is probably a group one. Now that, in some ways, makes sense, right? If you're adding this oil in just before you drain the oil, you don't need it to last, right? It's not, it's not going to go into the engine in service. So I need an oil that has virtually no... Um, you know, antioxidants or anything like that in it. What I do want is something that solvates additives and is in, in it of itself um, has high solvency, right? And group ones sort of fit that bill. So although initially you might go, hey, this is, you know, poor quality oil, you know, so-called poor quality for an engine oil, for an engine flush, this, this is ideal. It really fits the bill. All right, uh, next up, I found this one a little bit interesting. So it's got some... Um, but this is basically ZDDP, right? Zinc salts. Um, I'm not entirely sure why you would put that in an engine flush. So if you have an idea for why that would be the case, I'd love to see it in the comments because it's in there at a, at a proportion of 2.5%. So maybe they're trying to lay down an anti-wear layer for the next oil. I'm not entirely sure what the logic is there. And then this is where, you know, I expected actually to see this number much higher. So this is an overbased calcium detergent. Of course, if you're doing an engine flush, what you're trying to do is have something with high solvency as well as a decent amount of detergents. And those detergents are designed to go around and clean up all the deposits that you have in your engine, suspend them. And so that way, when you do your oil, oil drain, everything just falls out. So uh, that's what that's for. And there's really only three chemicals that are actually listed on this SDS. So um, anyway, that's kind of a really quick one today. Um, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at a, more of a consumer product and see exactly what's in it and use a lot of the information that we've kind of learnt over the past you know, 10 months that I've been doing these videos to apply it to a, to a consumer product. So anyway, um, I hope this has been helpful. If you've got questions or comments, as usual, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.